This is a first. A duplex lift station, fully plumbed for the DIY and contractor to put in any situation that demands a lift station sump pump system. This is not indoor material. This is not a cheap, flimsy basin. This is heavy, dual wall, culvert pipe. This is custom welded, custom made with an extended horizontal chamber that'll give you 80% less cycling of your sump pump, extending the life of the sump pump system. This will handle sheet water off the roof, sheet water off the driveway, your neighbor's yard water, your yard water. You can't build a yard drain system using indoor basins. It just doesn't work. It fails. This is a state-of-the-art, fully patented, everything about it. There's a handful of patents that go along with this. This is an exclusive, handmade, dual pump, duplex lift station that'll handle 10 inches of rain per hour. Nothing has ever been built like this before. Nothing has ever been made ready to set in the ground. Just dig a hole, install it, and you're all set for the DIY and contractor. This is an industry first. This is a game changer. Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. I'm Robert Sherwood, your host. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to take one of these indoor sump pump pits. This, this is an indoor sump pump basin. And you know, don't worry. The reason why, you know, it's, so flimsy is because it's only $17 and it's intended to be put in to say a, a basement where you're going to cement around it. So it's not meant for, you know, to be put out in the yard and ran over a lawnmower, but a lot of guys will just tuck them really tight to the house. So, the, you know, that kind of reduces, you know, the, the risk of damage. So I, I got a Zoller sump pump in this one and what I'm going to do is, I got these five gallon jugs. I want to see how much water it takes to actually turn this pump on. So let's see. I got 10 gallons. If I need more, I do have 20 gallons for this little demonstration. And I have no idea how it's going to turn out. So. We're all seeing it for the first right here. I know that this isn't much. The way they taper these basins, they don't hold very much, especially at the bottom. All right, there's five gallons. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah, it. <laughs> okay, so there's five gallons, and five gallons is what it takes to turn the sump pump on. So let me show you. I thought I was gonna have to actually use a, a 10 gallons for this, so this is a, quite a surprise. So here's the switch, it's a float. I'm going to force it down. The water makes it come up and then it turns on. Here, I'll add a little bit from this other one because it's right at that point where it's getting ready to click. And I didn't plumb it. I mean, we're, we, we're, we don't have to, to run it. I just want the switch mechanism to turn on. All right, there it is. So, like 
one gallons or something silly. The switch, yeah. So just a, just a hair over five gallons. Let's take a look at this together. So this is, you know, one of these cheap basins from the big box stores. And I, I've been warning you guys to stay away from them for a lot of reasons. So here, I'm gonna push this float down, let it come up on its own. I'm gonna slow it. So it's, I didn't want it to bounce back. I wanted it to go slow and then, so it's gonna run pretty much at five gallons, okay? That's it. So by design, just by its very design, this tapers, it tapers and it's smaller at the bottom. That's why so many people put cinder blocks and bricks at the bottom and then they set their pump on it because it's wider up higher. So it'll actually take a little more water that way. Does it reduce the cycling? I'm sure it adds up to something, but I don't believe it adds up to much. Now, I have a fully patented duplex system that's been something that's been conversation of the industry, and it's been a game changer. Contractors and DIYers are having all kinds of success. Look at this one more time, since we went through the trouble to do this. So there, it's off. That I pushed the float down as if I'm gonna let it up really slow because I don't want it. I want it to. So it was like 5.1 gallons of water turns this pump on. Now this is your typical, you know, basement type setup, and I don't recommend it for the outdoors. Never have. So let's look at the alternative. Let's take a look. Okay, so what I discovered after 35 years as a contractor, and never did I use an indoor sump basin for an outdoor yard system. I discovered going deeper and wider in diameter wasn't the answer. The answer was an extended chamber, a really nice long chamber. That way the water can come up and when it turns on, you have this entire chamber, depending on how you build it, tens and even hundreds of gallons of water. Why is this important and why is this very significant to the longevity of your yard system. Well, if you want as minimum maintenance as possible, the key is in the switch of the sump pump. Let me explain. All right, so I just showed you how five gallons of water triggers this, like five gallons in a cup. So then it runs that out. Then five gallons fills it, runs it out. Five gallon fills it, click, runs it out. Think about that. Five gallons at a time. Think about that. 99 out of 100 sump pump failures are in the switch. The switch mechanism, the mechanical mechanism, it just gets overworked. And I've learned this and I know this. Now, I'm not a guy that runs around in a van charging service fees. So I'm not big on replacing sump pumps. So I designed a system where it holds, we always build them to hold hundreds of gallons of water. So that when it goes on, here's the discharge. When it goes on, it really counts and it runs the water down. Then it takes hundreds of gallons if that's how you build them. Because see, I can make this chamber however long I want. We had a gentleman come 
and pick up a 12 foot section and an extra coupler on his duplex. And I get it. I applaud him. I encourage more length. It's not go deeper and, you know, have a wider diameter pit. Because, you know, I've done all that. Here, I just so happen to have some dual wall. So we used to take culvert pipe and we would, you know, go three feet, then four feet, then five feet, then six feet. So then we had to go bigger. So we went, you know, we go, you know, from a 24 to a 30. This got to, to be ridiculous. And guess what? You're not displacing that much more water. But when you have a chamber like this, that's when you're displacing a lot of water. So the reason why I wanted to develop a duplex is for this very reason. When the water's coming off your roof, when the water's coming out of the yard, when the water's coming, you got sheet water off the, the driveway, the roof, got neighbor's water, whatever your situation may be, I'm pretty sure five gallons at a time is not sufficient. I wanted to build a system that when the primary pump couldn't keep up. So what does that mean? So we have a sump pump in here. The water comes up. This is the primary pump. The water comes up, click. Now it's hundreds of gallons. This is a, a bigger system here. Hundreds of gallons, it's running it down. But say that all your rooftop water, all your driveway sheet water, all the yard water, whatever your situation may be, let's say that this pump can't keep up. Because think about it, at torrential rain, you got water coming in from everywhere. And we all know what that looks like. And let me tell you something, five gallons at a time, that ain't gonna get it done. That is not the answer. That, that is not the answer. So if this single pump, because it's gonna be the primary pump, it'll turn on first. The pumps aren't gonna run simultaneously unless this pump can't keep up. Guess what? Then the secondary pump, the float on it goes, and now you have two sump pumps keeping up with your water problem so you don't have a flooded garage, a flooded basement, a flooded sunroom, a flooded backyard, whatever your situation may be. All right, everybody. If you're interested in one of our duplex sump pump systems, they are fully plumbed and ready to be put in the ground. It's a patented unit.